I'm Gary C. Johnson. You've seen these billboards and ads that say size matters. I agree. The size that matters is the size of the results the law firm gets for their clients. We have several multi-million dollar verdicts here in Kentucky. In fact, our firm owns the record for the single largest personal injury verdict in the state of Kentucky. That's the size that matters to you. In Kentucky, give our firm the call. If you're hurt, injured, don't waste time. Gary Johnson drives for every dime. Welcome to Simply the Law of Life, a program created by attorney Gary C. Johnson. Simply the Law of Life provides free legal advice and encourages happiness and quality of life. Now, here's Simply the Law of Life with Gary C. Johnson and Keith Casebolt. Hello, everyone. Welcome into the radio program, Simply the Law of Life. I'm Keith Casebolt, and my dear friend, the creator of this program, is across from me, Gary C. Johnson. Good to see you. Good to be seen, my friend, as usual. It is. It is wonderful to be seen. Hello, guys and gals and good friends out there. How's the world been treating you? I hope it's been treating you fairly good. I ran into another book I'm going to read a little bit from today. Okay. I don't know if there's anything to it or not, but I'm going to pass it on to you. Maybe you guys can figure it out for me. You never know the information that you will give, and you never know who's going to get it that That's really right. needs it. <clears throat> yes. It's called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Evidently, he's a fairly famous uh, spiritual leader. He's got lots of followers and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I stumbled across his book, which it's been out quite a while, this book has. And there were some things in it that I thought might be worth sharing with you folks. So I'm going to share some of it with you. I'm interested. I'm waiting to hear. Okay. The first little thing I'm reading is, it's got a section, freeing yourself from your mind. Now, what's he mean by that? You know, we've talked about the chatterbox Mm -hmm. and the voice in our head. And this is what he's referring to here is that voice and the constant talking that we've got in our heads. And this is what he says do about it. When someone goes to the doctor and says, I hear a voice in my head, he or she will most likely be sent to a psychiatrist. The fact is that in a very similar way, virtually everyone hears a voice or several voices in their head all the time. Right, my friends? Oh, how well do we know? Okay. The involuntary thought process is that you don't realize you have the power to stop. Continuous monologues and dialogues. You have probably come across mad people in the streets incessantly talking or muttering to themselves. Well, that's not much difference from what you and all other normal people do, except that you don't do it aloud. (laughs) You're saying it inwardly (laughs) instead of outwardly, yeah. Yeah. The voice comments, speculates, judges, compares, complains, likes, dislikes, and on and on and on. The voice isn't necessarily relevant to the situation you find yourself in at the time. It may be reviving the recent or distant past or rehearsing or imagining possible future situations. Here it, here it often imagines things going wrong and negative outcomes. This is called worry. Sometimes this soundtrack is accompanied by visual images or mental movies. Even if the voice is relevant to the situation at hand, it will interpret it in terms of the past. This is because the voice belongs to your conditioned mind, which is the result of all of your past history, as well as all of the collective cultural mindsets you inherited. So you see and judge the present through the eyes of the past and get a totally distorted view of it. It is not uncommon for the voice to be a person's own worst enemy. Many people live with a tormentor in their head that continuously attacks and punishes them and drains them of all their vital energy. It is a cause of untold misery and unhappiness as well as disease to your body. The good news is that you can free yourself from your mind. This is the only true liberation. You can take the first step right now. Start listening to the voice in your head as often as you can. Pay particular attention to any repetitive thought patterns, those old gramophone records that have been playing in your head perhaps for many years. 
This is what I mean by watching the thinker, which is another way of saying, listen to the voice in your head, be there only, though, as a witnessing presence. You're mm. witnessing it talk. So it's when like, you, so I don't mean to interrupt you, but but is the author saying it's like you're listening in on a conversation that's right, as if though you were standing in a crowded <clears throat> restaurant and you heard di- somebody over here talking? Distance yourself from it. Okay. Just become a witness and watch it and listen carefully to it. Okay, I'm following you. When you listen to that voice, listen to it impartially. That is, that is to say, do not judge it. Do not judge or condemn what you hear. For doing so would mean that the same voice has come in again through the back door. You're letting the voice back in through the back door. Will you start judging what you're hearing? Because then the, the voice the has to defend itself. It's, well, it's the same voice. Okay. You'll soon realize there is the voice, and here I am, listening to it, watching it. This I am realization, this sense of your own presence, is not a thought. It arises from beyond the mind. Wow. So if you can listen to it impartially. Which means you've got to disconnect. To disconnect from that voice and just let it do its thing and listen carefully. Now, you know, that is an odd concept that you would listen to the inner voice, but you would treat it as if though it was a stranger in a, in a crowded room and you were overhearing their conversation. And then you would judge it impartially because you're not connected. Right, you're, you're just listening to it. There's no emotions involved. You're disconnecting yourself from it. So then you can take the emotion out of it, and you can listen to it and say, well, that doesn't make sense, or that does make sense, or that's interesting, or why would that person say that? Yeah. That's, I just thought it was interesting. I'm going to share it with my friends. It is an That's his way of looking at how you deal with it. Mm-hmm. Because as he's... As we've said on this program before, I used to say, well, you got to shut it up. As he says here, you don't shut it up. Well, now, we've talked three different ways. We first started saying, tell the voice to shut up. Then we came back with, let's be friends with the voice. Be friends with it and give it a name. And now this guy is saying... Just watch it. Just watch it, listen listen. to it, and disconnect from it as if though it was a stranger talking. Mm -hmm. Interesting concept. But it's all going back to the same thing. The voice is the problem. And you're trying to deal with And you're with trying the voice. to deal with it. Your own worst enemy, which is you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Amazing. Is it? I, I just find this stuff interesting. That's why I read this stuff. <laughs> I find it interesting. I was just talking with a friend today that said, he said this, he said, isn't it amazing that one day the world is full of opportunities? Everything is rosy. And then the next day, you're down and you think nothing's going to happen and everything's going to be bad. And, and I was telling him, I said, that is the voice mm-hmm. that is talking to you. But it's amazing that it can change your outlook that quickly. And if you look at it impartially and watch it, it, it should not be able to. Again, we're reading from the book The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Here's what he has to say. And he's talking about you have to learn to be where you are. Remember how many times I've said you need to be where you are? One of the greatest lessons you ever taught. Okay. If you're going to be there, be there. Be there. Yeah. And the question he's got here, the present moment is sometimes unacceptable, unpleasant, or awful. Okay. True. His answer to that, it is as it is. Observe how the mind labels it and how this labeling process, this continuous sitting in judgment, creates pain and unhappiness. By watching the mechanics of the mind, you step out of its resistance patterns, and you can then allow the present moment to be. This will give you a taste of the state of inner inner freedom from external conditions, the state of true inner peace. Then see what happens and take action if necessary or possible. Accept the present moment, regardless of what it is, as though you chose that moment as you chose it to be that way even if it's negative accept it okay then act whatever the present moment contains accept it as if you had chosen it always work with it not against it make it your friend and ally not your enemy this will miraculously transform your whole life i believe that i really do so 
Now, we, we're going to have friends out there that's saying, well, wait a minute, Gary, you don't know the job I've got. You don't know how, how tough I've got it, or you don't know the people I'm surrounded with or the problems I've got. What I'm saying is your attitude. Mm -hmm. Change your attitude to say, I choose this. I made the choice to be here. I made the choice to be in this position. I made the choice to be in this job. I accept it. It is my world. It is I accept it. It is my me. Until I decide Until to change it. Until I can it. figure out how to act and change it. Okay, I'm with you now. So okay, I made the decision to do this. It was my decision. And as long as I'm here, I'm going to make the best of it until I can make the decision to change it for the better. This is, I'm going to read you again what he says. Okay. Accept, then act. Whatever the present moment contains, accept it as if you had chosen it. Always work with it, not against it. Make it your friend and ally, not your enemy. This will miraculously transform your whole life. And it's all within you to do that. You know, that kind of takes the fear away from things, doesn't it? I mean... I just, again, I'm passing it on to you folks. Mm -hmm. I've read this in this book, and I'm wanting to share it with you, what he has to say about it. For better or worse, take it or leave it, or whatever. By the way, before I go back to this book, how many years have we been doing this? 22. <laughs> Radio 22. And we have said... That our goal is to touch one life, right? Just one. You said if we do one, Keith, we, we've done the our job. The whole thing is worth it, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you can call it coincidence or whatever. But I normally walk in the mornings. But for some reason, I didn't walk the other morning. So I walked later in the afternoon and evening, actually. And that's the only day I'd done that in forever. So we're talking coincidence, right? Sure. And I'm walking up the, the hill there, and there's this young man working over in a neighbor's yard. And he looks up and he sees me. Now, I've got an old hat, a hat on and sunglasses. There's no way he could have known who I was. Okay. Not the normal suit tie that, uh, that you see <clears throat> Gary C. Johnson in. Yeah. He's... Drops everything he's doing and comes straight toward me. And he said, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so the disguise worked. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I'm Gary Johnson. And I said, uh, why did you come over here? He said, well, I just felt like I had to. I needed to. Okay. Come over to say hello. I said, I'm Gary Johnson. He said, you have that radio show with Keith's case boat. I said, yep, I do. That's me. He said, well, I just want you to know that the two of you on one of your shows saved me from committing suicide. Oh, Lord. You are kidding. Nope. And I said to myself, I can't wait to tell Keith and my friends about it because we made our goal. Wow. We at least touched one life. Now, is that coincidence or what? The fact that you would walk at that time of day, as opposed to your early morning walk. And he got up and come over there to a total stranger. He had no idea who it was. Mm -hmm. To say hello, only to tell you that because of some kind words of encouragement that you said on this program, that it changed his mind. And he did not commit suicide. And he said, I love life. Wow. You know... That makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck, doesn't mm -hmm. it? And, and now you think about that. Here's this young man. What's, gonna, what's all going to happen in his life? Who are the people that he's going to touch? Whose lives is he going to change? I mean, what will he go many, on and do? Many. Yes. I mean, his impact on this world is going to be felt, and we would have been robbed of it had he made the other decision. That's the point. If anyone's thinking of committing suicide out there, please take this as a meaning of how wonderful it was for this young man and how grateful he was that he was alive. 
and that you will be too if you don't. Control those voices. If you can't control them, make friends with them. That's telling you to do that. Deal with it. Look at it as an impartial observer and say, that's stupid to yourself or whatever. You know what you pointed out to me? <clears throat> the, the one time you talked about it and said, Keith, would you ever give the advice or would you ever say the mean things to a friend or a stranger that you do yourself? And when you pointed that out, I, it became ludicrous that you would say and do things to yourself that you would never do to another human being. I was looking at the human anatomy the other day mm -hmm. and the heart, the liver with all the different lobes, lungs, kidneys, skin. All of those things, your intestines, all of those things operate totally independent of our conscious mind. But yet they're controlled by the brain. Every one of them. Mm -hmm. And they all perform a function that allows this body to operate that houses our brain, which is who we are. And to think of the intelligence it took to build a human being. Yeah. And to put in a refinery in inside of it, uh, ability to make electricity inside of it, and a supercomputer inside of it, and it could live off a of lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the only fuel it needs, water, lettuce. And the amazing thing of having a human body, my friends, and how lucky we are mm -hmm. that we, each and every one of us, has the ability to have all of these things going on for us that we just take for granted. Yeah. And that we have it today. Yeah. Today. Yeah. And what his big thing in this book is you cannot spend your time worrying about yesterday or even thinking about it and you for sure can't worry about the future gary do you believe that 99.9 .9 of all of us when we're when we're okay when we don't give in to the voices and we're not emotionally detached or something we realize that but we get off track. We let some little something come into our life, or we let a problem come in, or some, something. Some idiot say something. Yeah, somebody said something negative about you, or hurt your feelings, or told you you weren't good enough, and you got your feelings hurt, and then all of a sudden the voice takes over and leads you down a path to where you feel worthless, and you're wanting to make these stupid decisions, when in reality, you're such a miracle. As you just pointed out, each no and, one would Each destroy. and every person listening to this program is a walking miracle, unique, one of a kind, an extraordinary thing to be on this earth. You know, I hope there's a friend out there that feels like I do. After I do this radio program with you, every week after I do it, whenever you leave the studio, I walk back into my office and I think, what in the hell was I worried about? There's nothing to worry about. I ought to be the happiest person in the world. I'm alive today. Yeah. I can, I, can, I can love. I can laugh. I can create. I can do things. The world is magical. Now, that's after the show. Today. Yes, but you know what happens? I don't get to see you for four or five <laughs> days. And on about the fifth day, in comes the voice. Well, just come up and walk with me. <laughs> but that's how it happens to us. Mm -hmm. You know, we let negativity slip in, and then the next thing you know, four or five days later, you're like, oh, things are so bad. This is happening. That's happening. I've got this problem. And when the voice takes over and it starts talking to you folks, just remember, a record here, I think, has got a pretty good idea. Step back and just witness it. Mm -hmm. Move yourself away from it and witness it. 
So, in fact, our problem with the voice is that we're emotionally attached to the voice, and you have told us emotions are crazy. Yeah, always. So if we step away from it and we treat it as if, though, it is a different person in the room talking. And you're watching it impartially or you're not judging it. No, we're just listening. So then, because there's no emotions attached, we can sit there and listen and go, well, that's just absolutely crazy. You don't even have to say that. You get the feeling. That doesn't, yeah. As he says, you don't have to say or think anything at that point. But that you start feeling an inner joy. That's entirely separate from that voice. <laughs> you know, I one time I had somebody tell me, you know, I really love Gary's show, but, you know, I'm just, I'm just a little old me. I'm not that important. And I asked them, I said, let me ask you a question. Why is it that you're willing to, to believe people that tell you negative things and say bad things about you, but you won't believe my friend Gary... <laughs> when he's, he's paying for the time to get on there to tell you that you're special and that you're a creation and that you're a miracle and that you deserve to be happy. And they said, you know, that's a good question. And everyone around of you is a miracle. Yeah. And deserves equal respect from you, just like you deserve it from them. And that's the thing you need to realize, folks. We're all on this planet together. We were put here for whatever reason, which I don't know if any of us will ever know. But I do know one thing. It wasn't meant for us to be miserable. It was meant for us to enjoy it and be happy. Gary, if we did that one single thing that you read to us about, having a reverence for life, would it absolutely take care of all problems? It would make a big difference. So, folks, none of you are going to let anyone put you down. And you're going to walk away if they start it. And if the voice starts talking to you negatively, you're just going to listen to it <laughs> from a distance. <laughs> and if you need to, talk to it. Yeah, you know, I'll share this with our friends. I told Gary the other day, I said, I'm so proud. I'm so happy. I think I'm learning. And, and Gary said, what, what happened? I said, well, I felt myself getting upset the other day. And I thought... You know, it'd be nice to go in and watch a ball game and have a cold drink. And that's what I did. And all of a sudden, I wasn't angry. I wasn't upset. I treated myself to a good Cincinnati Reds ball game and sat there and had the time of my life. And all of those feelings that I, I thought were boiling up just simply went away because they really didn't mean anything. And they don't matter. Didn't matter. And I was so glad that I did. Because 24 hours later, it would have been crazy to have got upset over it. There was some other stuff in this book I was going to read, but I don't think we've got time. I might bring it back next week and read a little bit of it. Well, my friend, it was a good lesson. The power of now, and as you've told us, now is really all we have. That's right. I mean, we don't I mean, have he tomorrow. He puts great emphasis on not worrying about the past and don't dwell on the future. What was that quote you read me one time about the most optimistic person in the world sets the alarm for the next day because <laughs> you're planning on being here, not knowing that you're going to be? Mm -hmm. But that's true optimism, I guess. Great story and uh, the story about the young man. You know, I, I hope somehow, some way he stays in touch with you and we see what happens with this, this guy's life. I'm and not worried about him. He's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. He is fine. He got it. He got it. He's happy. <laughs> you can catch Gary's television show Tuesday nights on WYMT, Simply the Law of Life. Actually, now the television show and the radio show have the same name because Gary and I realize there's a lot of laws out there, but the laws of life are the ones we really need to be working <laughs> you know, on. That's what you need to be worried about. <laughs> yeah, those are the ones we got to do to be happy. So you can catch Gary's television show, Simply the Law of Life, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock on WYMT. For those of you that are up late at night in central Kentucky, you can catch the late night replay on WKYT. If you start your week early, the Fox affiliate on Monday mornings at 6.30, or we'll start your weekend early at 6.30 on your Fox affiliate. Now, if you have a message or you'd like to get in touch with Gary, gary at garycjohnson.com. 
we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you about the show or what you're doing in your own life or uh, hopefully some success stories about happiness because we all need encouragement. Amen. I'll amen that too. Gary at GaryCJohnson.com. Thank you, my friend. Wonderful program. On behalf of Gary C. Johnson, I'm Keith Casebolt. As always, Gary and I look forward to seeing you again next week, right here at this same time. Thank you for listening to Simply the Law of Life, a program created by attorney Gary C. Johnson. Until next week, may you be safe, blessed, and happy. If you're hurt, injured, don't waste time. Gary Johnson cries for every dime. I'm Gary C. Johnson. You've seen these billboards and ads that say size matters. I agree. The size that matters is the size of the results the law firm gets for their clients. We have several multi-million dollar verdicts here in Kentucky. In fact, our firm owns the record for the single largest personal injury verdict in the state of Kentucky. That's the size that matters to you. In Kentucky, give our firm the call.